Hello everybody, welcome to the online, our first online lecture, uh, which is pre-recorded. Uh, this lecture is going to be on uh, generics in Java. This is the lecture of week 9, uh, current week. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about some of the things like why we need generics, how to define generic classes, uh, how to write static generic methods, how to use bounded types, and what are bounded types what is backward compatibility, and what are wildcard types, and what is type erasure. I may, most of the things are going to be coding, but some of the things I'm, gonna, I'm just going to open the book and try to give a brief explanation uh, about that subtopic. All right. Uh, also, I need to tell you guys that this video is going to be very long. Uh, since I just started, I, <laughs> I, I really don't know how much it's going to take maybe an hour, maybe more, maybe less. I'll try to not forget anything that I wanted to talk to you guys. I made a little bit of plan on a piece of paper. Uh, um, if I miss anything, you, also, you always can email me or if you don't understand, just email me, let me just let me know and uh, we will try to uh, handle that situation. Yeah. And uh, I did a very rough plan, uh, so I apologize for that. This video may be, may be, at some point, it may be very unplanned things, and I may end up doing some very unexpected things. There may be a very long pauses. I really apologize, guys. Uh, and this video is gonna have minimum uh, post production. I mean, I will not spend lots of time. I will not be able to spend a lot of time for uh, post-production uh, like removing pieces of video uh, where I do long pauses or just mute the sound uh, and so on and so forth. You got that. You guys are smart. So yeah, without any uh, further waiting, let's just start. So we're gonna start with uh, why we need generics. And this is a very. We're going to start with a simple example of stack of integers. You, I think this stack of integers appears in chapter number ten, when we, uh, which talks about objects and classes. Stack is a very simple data structure with uh, LIFO. Let me actually write it here. Yeah, I'm going to upload these files also uh, into the uh, shared folder so you can guys download these files uh, later. Uh, so LIFO, it stands for last in, first out. Last in, first out. The last element you put into the stack is going to be the first element you take out of the stack. And the first element you put into the stack is going to be the last one. Uh, you can think of this stack as box of books. Yeah, When you put the books into the box, uh, the first book you put is going to be on the bottom. And the last book is going to be on the top. And the first one you take out of the box is, is going to be the one that you put last. So this is stack of integers. In order to hold these books, it's going to have... Actually, it's not books. Yeah? This stack is going to be stack of integers. We need some kind of basic data structure because it's going to contain multiple elements. So we're going to use this integer. Also, we have a data field for size and also data field for default capacity. Like default capacity of the box until it gets filled. It has two couple of constructors, an empty constructor, a constructor which takes some capacity, and also we have methods like push. It checks for the size of the uh, this elements array. If the size, I mean, if the element that you're going to put is being pushed into the stack which is already full, we're going to make the stack twice as bigger. Yeah? So we, we're going to create a new array that is twice as big, like next time it's going to be 32 elements. And then we'll just copy everything from these elements into this temp. And then we reassign this temp into the elements. So our elements now is 32. Uh, the, its size is going to be 32 and only 16 is going to be taken. And the 17th element is going to be the, the one that we push. Uh, make sure that you understand this part of code. Uh, and pause if necessary. Yeah, you can pause and uh, go back and go forward. Anything you can do with this video, hopefully. Pop is going to return you guys the last element and also remove it from the uh, from the stack. It's like taking the, the, the book from the box. 
yeah, and holding it in your hand. Peak, it's just it's just gonna give you what is the topmost element in the stack. It's like looking at what the the topmost book is, but not actually taking it from the stack. So here the size of the stack decreases by one, and here the size of the stack doesn't change. Empty just say, tells you whether the box is empty or not, and get size returns you the number of elements in the stack. So let's just quickly create a stack. Stack of integers are going to let's write stack equals new stack of integers, and let's put some elements. Push let's say one because it's an integer. Duplicate. Let's put two and three. Now let's um, print out all elements one by one by calling its pop method. So we put them in the order like one, two, three. One is on the top, I mean it's in the bottom, three on the top, and when the first pop is gonna take three out of the box and then two and then one. It's gonna be in the reverse direction. Yeah, three to one. Alright, very good. Now let's do the next step. So since this stack only holds integers, we need a different stack for different type of very uh, data. Uh, for different types of data. So let's create a stack of strings. Stack of strings. If you look carefully, you're going to see that the stack of strings, the functionality of stack of strings is going to stay the same. We're going to have a data, uh, data field for storing the, the elements of the stack. We need the size of the stack. We need to know how many elements we have in the stack. Default capacity, also empty constructor, this constructor. We need to have this code, right, with exactly this kind of algorithm. Pop, peak, everything is same. So we can just basically copy this, paste it here, and do a couple of changes. Let's change the class name first. Stack of uh, strings. Strings. And we need to change the name of the constructors as well. And what's wrong here? Stack of oh, sorry, stack of strings. All right. Now, since the elements we're going to store in this uh, stack is going to be string, yeah. So we need to change this integer into string, All right? So it's going to be string. And here we have uh, some of the parts of the code which are underlined with red color. So here, since this is a string array, this should be string here as well. Here, since the, the we have the, the elements is a string array, this temporary is also should, should be string array. We need to convert it into string. Let's actually copy string and paste it here. Here, uh, the value we push into the stack should be string. The pop should return string. Pick should return string. Get size. All right, that's it. So let's actually go ahead and try to. I'm just going to copy this code here and we're going to create stack of strings. Let's go with stack 2. Actually, let me just comment this piece of code out or just remove it. Let's actually comment it. Stack of strings, uh, the right part also should be strings. And we need to like now we need to push strings here, right? So we can't push integers. And let's run it. And the result is going to be the same, yeah? Actually, the result looks exactly the same. Let's change it a little bit. We're going to say hello, salem, and uh, coronavirus. Okay, coronavirus. Yeah, that's it's probably one of the most frequently used words at this point coronavirus virus all right so they come in the reverse direction now let's make it a little bit more fun yeah uh, we will defeat coronavirus okay coronavirus defeat will we but when we pop them Oh, we need to do one one more time. Yeah? Uh, it's going to show us in the reverse direction. We will defeat coronavirus. All right, perfect. Now, let's uh, cha let's look at the similarities and differences in these two classes. I'm going to quickly switch like this. If you notice, 
the mo like 90% of the code is same. Only the parts where we write the type is different, right? Like integer only changes in the string, and the name of the class changes. That's it. Let's go down a little bit here as well. You see, string in string and it's like we are writing same same code but for different types again and again. So you may have infinitely many different types. Are you going to create different classes for stacks? It's not the best decision. It's going to work, but it's going to be very very. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work, yeah, because you're going to write lots of code. So how to avoid the situation? The possible solution, you can pause the video, guys, by the way, and think about it for a couple of maybe minutes. I'm just going to continue at this point. So possible solution, I'm telling the answer, by the way, is just create a stack of objects, right? Because object is going to be is a super class for all classes in Java, so we can just create stack of objects. Let's just copy this and paste it here and also change the class name stack of objects. Let me copy and paste it here. And also we need to change the string into the object. I think it's control R. Yeah. Let's search for string and then change it into object. Let's match the case. Let's double check. All right. Replace all. Perfect. Now this is a stack of objects. Now we ca we can create. Uh, we can change it into the stack of objects. It's gonna work because string is an object, right? String is an object. All right. Perfect. Now let me comment this out. And let's go back here. Now let's change it into stack of objects integer is an object right here the stack of object holds objects and when we push we push the object well integer is an object so that's why this code is going to work perfect very good we have only one class for all the different types for all the different types we have only one class and this actually guys was the solution i mean this was the default implementation of the array list class in java up to the version 1.5. In the version of Java 1.5, they introduced generics, and because this had some limitations, right? This had some limitations. I'm just gonna now explain you what kind of potential problem we have with this kind of approach. So let's say I'm just gonna comment this out. We're gonna create uh, the third stack, stack of objects, stack of objects stack equals new stack of objects what potential problem here we can get since the push method takes an object it means by definition we can paste here uh, we can write here different types right so initially we wanted to store in the stack we wanted to store the elements of the same type here we wanted to store integers here we want to store strings here we're storing only objects, but because of polymorphism, it allows us to add a different, I mean, data of different type, right? Like strings and integers. And it's going to work fine. You know, like if we want to print like stack.pop, it's going to work very nice and smooth, however we planned. But it might give, it might give us uh, huge, huge problems, huge, huge problems. Let me show you one potential problem. So let's say we're going to have, um, uh, let's say, what kind of potential problem? Uh, what did I prepare? Let me try to remember. OK, yeah, I, I, I remembered it. Let's say you want to find out the, the uh, the sum of the elements in the stack you like you create stack of objects oh, okay all right I mean of course you're gonna push like integers here uh, the elements of the same type but it still allows you to add strings right it doesn't restrict you in any ways you can do so and also uh, you want to find what's the total here how are you gonna do it actually let me just take it copy it from here and put it here 
uh, we're gonna need these uh, pieces of code later now let me put more space in between we might need them so total in total equals uh, zero yeah we're gonna find the total by uh, popping the elements from the stack right we're gonna write a loop while the stack dot empty yeah well initially when it's empty this is gonna be false yeah we're gonna say while it's not empty right while it's not empty what we're gonna do we're gonna say total plus equals uh, stack dot pop that's what we're gonna do yeah uh, one thing is that stack pop returns us the object yeah so that's why we need to cast it here into an integer like this and then we display the total now it's gonna sh it should show us six all right it shows six now look if we write stack dot push uh, let's say hello compiler is not gonna tell us that something's wrong here and uh, usually since we write lots of code we are like kind of very busy thinking about algorithms in our heads right we don't usually notice very quickly about some of the small mistakes that we make for example here this is like potential problem we're pushing the string where we should not push right like compiler should tell us that we shouldn't do this because it's very very bad why it's bad let's run this code it's bad because of this situation here uh, since we pop the elements from the stack and we're casting it into an integer the last the first element that we uh, pop is going to be hello and we're trying to convert it into an integer which is impossible we can't convert string in i mean we can't cast the string into an integer in this way that's why it's going to be class cast exception all right this is a potential problem and uh, in order to avoid this kind of problems you need, need you like a programmer needs to rely on their experience and how they kind of uh, are uh, can see the details small details in the program so generics solve this problem how how generic solve this problem now we're gonna write a generic class we're just gonna call it stack okay we're just gonna call it stack we're gonna copy this code from here and paste it here uh, change the class name and change the constructor's name all right and we're gonna say that this stack is a generic class and this is gonna be its parameter e generic type it's gonna be the generic type and the elements array is gonna be of type e we're gonna change each object into e all right so this is going to be some type for this stack we say e elements yeah we, we have some limitations i'm just going to quickly explain you how to avoid this in a, in a little bit second uh, how do we when we push a value it's going to be of type e when we pop the value and return it the return value is going to be e and when we pick the return value is going to be e and here we can't since e is unknown during the runtime user can write anything there that's why we have limitations such this the how to avoid this we're gonna just say we're gonna create an object array and cast it into an array of E's we're gonna do the same here it's gonna be new object array and which later is gonna be cast into an uh, array e of E's right. it's also a small change but now like and and we added this small E here how we're gonna how we're gonna incorporate it here how the how it's gonna affect our code now how to create that stack we're gonna say stack we can see that it's a, uh, like generic class double click uh, stack of uh, let's say integers it's gonna be the same as you create an array list right it's gonna be stack new stack stack dot push one two three it's gonna be exactly the same actually let me just copy code from here 
and that finds the sum of the elements in the stack. Let's run it. And you can see that it finds the total. Now let's try to push some different var variable. Push, let's say hello. All right, now you see that it's, it's marked with the red color. It means that we can't compile this code. And if we mouse over into this error, we're going to see that the required type is integer and provided type is string. Why it knows that it's required type is integer? Because we're telling it, right? Because we're telling it. If we go to stack, we have to define what this type E is before we're going to use its methods. Right? So the Java compiler is going to know that this stack uses integers. That's why this E is automatically kind of, it's not actually integer uh, in the during the runtime but you can think for simplicity that e is going to become like integer and it's gonna, instead of each e it's just going to write integer okay like this i'm just going to undo replace it's going to be like integer you know everywhere we have integer all right by the way you can't use int i mean you can't use here int because int uh, here we need to write uh, the, the class of the reference type it should be integer all right so what kind of problem did we solve here initially we were able to push a string into the stack of integers but now we can't put a push a string into the stack of integers and this makes our code more reliable and more readable why because we can catch errors before running right catching errors before running during the compile time is much is much better why because uh, you may uh, think that you wrote a perfect program, you are like very happy and then, then you run it and then you see lots of bugs which are runtime. Yeah. But when you do it in the second way, you're going to write a program and the compiler is going to tell you, okay, you can't do that, you can't do this, you're going to fix them. And then when you say happily, all right, I'm done it, it's really done it, okay? You don't need to return back to fix your run, uh, this kind of errors. Right? So here you are responsible for fixing the problems here the compiler is responsible for fixing the problems so it's like you take the responsibility from your shoulders and give it to the compiler okay all right so this is really really nice okay so we finished the first part which is why we need generics to solve this kind of potential problem and also how to define generic classes this is an example of defining a generic class and also you can like do lots of different types here uh, you can write if necessary and the homework <laughs> I prepared the homework it's gonna be uh, using two, two, uh, two parameters all right uh, now the next section now we're gonna learn how to write um, generic static generic methods all right static generic methods we're gonna do it here I'm just going to comment this out and move down. So the first method we're going to write is print r, public static void print r. Let's say this method is going to print an array of integers, okay? Int r. It's going to be very simple loop r.length system out print r I and uh, it's, it should let's print on one line with the space in between and at the end we're just gonna print a new one okay very simple code now let's write a method for printing array of strings with the same logic as before you're gonna cop we're gonna copy this code and change this into strings right it's gonna be overloaded method and you have you may have thousands of different types are you going to write different methods for each type it's not the best solution right because you can use this rule as a rule of thumb you know uh, as uh, when you see that you're repeating the code many many times the same code you can think that there's something wrong yeah there should be a better better way to do it repeating the same code again and again is not the best option so we're going to fix this problem how we're going to do it we're going to make the static method 
generic, we're going to say, okay, this static method is generic E, and this array is going to be array of E's. That's it. Very simple, right? Now we can use this uh, static method to print different types of arrays. Let's create an array of integers. Integer array int r equals, I'm just going to create it like this, 1, 2, 3. An array of strings. Uh, yeah. We, this is going to be our motto for today. We will defeat Corona virus. Now let's call that method. Print r int r. Hmm, something's wrong here. I'm I'm gonna tell you. I made it intentionally. String r. Why? Because the required type is e, which means uh, we need to make it an integer. It should be a, a reference type. Okay. Now let's run it. All right, very good. One, two, three. We will defeat coronavirus. One method for all the different types. This is an, a perfect example of a static uh, generic method. Let's do the second method. Let's print a real list, all right? Because because why not? Right? Public static e void print array list. Uh, we need to accept an array list here, array list of E's, right? You guys got the logic, you guys are smart. It should be array list of E's, and the code is exactly the same. We can just copy this part. And instead of R length, we're going to say R dot size. And instead of doing R I, we're going to do R dot get I. Okay, these are methods of the array list. Let's create an array list. We're going to say, okay, I want a array list of doubles. Uh, double r equals new array list. We're going to say double r dot add. Let's add 3.14. This is the, like pi day, right? Two days ago we had pi day, 14th of March. Double r dot add. 2.71 or 73 the constant e and double r dot add 1.618 and i guess what kind of constant this is all right uh, we're gonna call print array list and then we're gonna pass double r that's it okay so now we're gonna see our double r and its contents okay I hope now you know how to write uh, generic static methods. Calling these methods is a little bit tricky. Yeah, you guys need to remember this thing. Well, if you do enough of practice, you will not have to remember. They are called like this. Okay, so I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna save a little bit of time. Uh, so you call it by specifying the type, exactly like here. All right, that's it for the for the static generic methods. Now we're going to talk about bound types. I'm, and and I'm, as usual, I'm going to start with an example. Let's say uh, we want to find out the total of the array, and it's going to be a generic method, right? We know how to write. Well, let's call it sum. We know how to write generic methods. Public vo static void sum. It's gonna find the total and then it's just gonna it's just gonna print it. Okay, it's just gonna print it. We're gonna say okay, it's gonna be E R. We assume that users are gonna send here arrays of numeric types. Okay, numeric types. That's why since double is kind of like the father of all the numbers, it's bigger. Yeah, a any number can be stored in a double. Uh, the total is going to be in, inside the double, uh, inside this uh, double variable, and then we're going to have the same loop. I'm just going to copy, okay? And then instead of printing these elements, we're just going to do total 
plus equals uh, R I. Okay, interesting. What's 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 wrong here? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, here we have a problem because this array is an array of E's, right? It's an array of E's. Yeah, we can't add like doubles and E's. How do we how do we find the total? How do we find the total? It's a tricky question, right? It's a very, very tricky question. How do you do that? Because its type is E. Can we cast it? Can we cast it? Let's cast it into double. All right, great. We're just gonna cast it into double, and then we're gonna add it and return. Ah, no, no return. Yeah, we can't. We're not returning. Just print total. So these are our two numeric. Let's actually create a double array. Let's call it dblr. It's going to be 1.1, 2.2, and 3.3. Let's comment these guys out so they are not. disturbing us okay it's a part of different program so we're just gonna comment this out now we want to find the total of these two uh, array uh, arrays we're gonna say okay find me sum of int r okay find me sum of double r let's run it and see it should be 6 and 6.6 6. and we get the problem yeah e can cannot be converted into double E cannot be converted into double. This is a potential problem. Let's look at the book. Uh, actually, how do we approach this problem? I wanted to give you a different example. So how do we approach this problem? Um, well, I know how to approach this problem. Since we are dealing with numeric types, right? We expect that this array should be containing some numeric types. Now, it should be kind of like any type, like integer or double, but they should be limited or bounded. Yeah. So we sh we say e extends number. Okay. We're we're just gonna write it. What does this mean? So it takes an array of e's, but this e, the class e, should be the class which extends number. Right. Actually, it can be number. It's not uh, exactly extends. It can be number. It's like less than or equal to. Right? It can be number or any of its subtypes. If we go to the number class and check it in the API, let's go quickly. It's an abstract class. I guess yeah, it's an abstract class and it's super class of all these different classes. Right? Big integer, big decimal. And what happens here? We take this uh, number. We're not going to do double because I don't think that we can cast into double. Let's just check it. I don't remember. Yeah, we can't do that. But we can do something like this. Since we know that E is something that extends number, they have like the methods, right, of the number class. By default, they have the methods of the number class. And we can just call the method called double value. It's just going to give us the double value. Of the element and then what we're gonna see is this all right okay this example wasn't very perfect I'm sorry uh, but uh, it started not perfectly yeah <laughs> but now I, I hope you understand what this means here here we put like the upper bound yeah it can be number or any uh, any of the number subclasses by writing extends also, we can write super. It's a different thing. Uh, it should. It shows us if we write super, we say that e is something which is super class of number. Yeah, it's like a lower bound. Here we write upper bound. Okay. For more information, you always can go to the book and read it in the book, or come. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you can't come. Or let me know.
maybe we we, sh we will appoint or, I mean we will make an online meeting and uh, I will try to answer your questions all right that's it for the bond types oh sorry <laughs> there's one more example actually one more example let's write let's write a generic static method Uh, that returns right here this is void yeah now we're gonna return now we're gonna return what do we return public uh, we're gonna write a method called max okay Pop let's make it void initially max there are gonna be two elements a and b okay so we need to find the max between two elements a and b how do we do that well, obviously, uh, if we want to compare elements, we assume that they implement the comparable interface, right? So they kind of are like subclasses of this comparable interface. So we're just going to say extends comparable. Uh, we can't just write comparable. And we, since comparable is a generic interface, we need to say comparable E. All right. So it means like, some class E, which implements comparable E. It means instead, I mean, it it means that yeah, this E can be string, right? Why? Because string ex implements comparable string. It can be integer because integer implements comparable integer. You can check it, guys. You can go to the integer class. It implements the comparable integer, right? So we kind of like limit. And we know since this is this e implements comparable, it has the compare to method, and we can find the maximum between these two elements. How do we find the maximum? We say if let's say uh, it returns true. Oh, if they are equal, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, we're gonna say if a dot compare to b. Yeah, if it's equal, to, I mean, it's if it's greater than zero. It means a is bigger. We can just say system out print on a. In else, we can just do system out print on b. Okay. So max gives us the maximum between two elements. Let's actually use it here. I'm just gonna collapse this, guys. Okay. So I want to know what the, is the maximum between one and three. Let's run it. Three, perfect. I don't. I want to know what's maximum between apple. I mean, uh, what's maximum between vitamin vitamin C and uh, try to find out what's the next word in three seconds. Three, two, one coronavirus okay if you guessed it very good for you coronavirus what's bigger of course vitamin C we will defeat coronavirus vitamin C yeah it's gonna compare alphabetically okay alphabetically let's change this code so that it returns the value right since we take the value of type E Probably we're going to return the value of the same type. Like if it's integer, it's going to be the return type is going to be integer. If it's string, it's going to be string. So instead of void, we're just going to write e. That's it. Okay. Now the compiler, yeah, the the compiler is going to expect us so that we return something. Here we're going to return a. Here we're going to return b. Okay. So and instead of just calling these two methods, what we're going to do? Oops. Oh my gosh, what, what's happening? Okay, comment it out. System out print ln, maximum between 1 and 3. And let's say string uh, winners equal winner equals maximum between, uh, let's just copy here. Okay, system out print ln winner. 
yeah, you can store the result of this method into a variable. That's like the meaning of uh, the methods that return some values, so that we can store them. Vitamin C, perfect. All right, so that th this is the end for the. I mean, this is an example for the bounded uh, generic types. Okay, this is an upper bound. Let's see, did we miss something here? Hopefully not. Yeah, this is a wonderful case study which explains you how to sort an array of objects using a generic method. So here, let me just quickly explain you because it's relevant. It takes an array of uh, type E and it has an upper bound. It should be implementing comparable and later you know, right? So you can just use any sorting algorithm here. It can be merge sort or selection sort, bubble sort, any sorting algorithm you like because you have this compared to method. All right, now we're going to talk about backward compatibility. All right, let's see. Backward compatibility. Okay, in the beginning of the video I mentioned that generics appeared in Java version 1.5, right? So you can Google it. Uh, what version of Java introduced generics? Yeah, yeah, earlier it was 5, but now it's called 1.5. Java Standard Edition 5. Okay, before that, before that they didn't have generics, but there are tons of code which are written in, in that uh, version. Yeah, so when you are using newer version of Java, like Java 8. Okay, and you have thousands of programs that are, that are running in Java 5 or Java 3. Okay, and in Java 8 you are using generics, in Java 3 you are not using generics, and uh, when you compile the code which is written in Java 3 using the compiler of Java 8, you're not going to be able to do it because uh, they don't use generics correctly. All right. So in order to support the code which is written previously with the earlier versions, versions of Java, yeah, you need to introduce some kind of feature in the higher versions of Java. That feature is called backward compatibility. Okay? It's like in Russian it's going to be обратная совместимость. Okay? Обратная совместимость с версиями Java, с ранними версиями Java. Okay? Cheers for those who understand Russian. I'm sorry for those... <laughs> Uh, who struggle with Russian, maybe foreigners, I apologize. Backward compatibility. So, since Java 8, yeah, I'm using Java 8, it, it supports backward compatibility for generics, we can do something like this. So this is our stack. Yeah, we can create stack and not specify the generic type. Okay, you can do so. This is because of the gen uh, I mean backward compatibility because in earlier versions of Java, the classes like ArrayList, which are already generic and were not generic previously, are written like this. Yeah. Also, you can create an ArrayList by the way. All right. So you can create, uh, you're going to do this. And on the background, what's going to happen on the background? On the background, the compiler is just going to put object here. Okay. You're just going to take and put object here. Implicitly for you. It's going to be same as writing this. Okay. The same as writing that one. So still we can use the methods, push, yeah, look, you want to write push, it shows me the object, yeah, so we can understand that it uses this object as a type parameter. We can push, let's say, one, we can push two, we can find what's the total, but it, it still allows us to push variables of different types. And we know that this is a huge problem 
huge, huge problem. Potential. Okay. So don't use if a class is generic. Yeah. Try to give the exact type for this class. And this is unsafe. This is very, very unsafe. Okay. Yeah, and it's briefly introduced here. Okay. So that's it for the backward compatibility and the row types. Now uh, we have we are almost at the finish line. Uh, we're gonna look at wildcard types. What is a wildcard? Well, a wildcard is something very very interesting. Uh, let me show it in CMD. Uh, if I showed you on Mac, 100% it would work, but here I am not sure. And also this is uh, the computer of my colleague, Razdarin Arai, Razdarin teacher. So I need to go to desktop because I have my folder there. Uh, dear. All right, so I have. Um, let's create a couple of. Couple of files there. I'm just gonna. I want to quickly explain you. What is. What is a wildcard? Let's say input.txt. Let's copy it. And let's change it to output dot. Okay, it's going to be of different, uh, a different type. We can call type and input txt. It this 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 one shows the contents. And now, how do I remove the file? Oh my gosh, I think I'm doing very random stuff here. I'm trying to explain. Uh, some unnecessary thing for a long time. Remove a file in CMD. Dell. Okay, Dell. Let me make a copy. Copy. Dell. Input. TXT. Let's look. Okay, it's deleted. Nice. Let's return it back. Copy paste. Del. You see, here star means anything. Okay, this is the wild card. That's what I was trying to explain you. When you write del all, like star dot it means instead of star there can be anything. And in other words, it means all the files that ends with that ends with txt. Okay, all the files with txt extension, all the files with dot extension removed all right that's the wild card and like the generics introduces these wild cards and let me actually give you an example where these wild cards can be used let's say we have uh, a method we have a method to find to find the total in a, in a stack okay we're gonna find the total in a stack we're gonna say public static okay it's gonna be static let's say void sum and it's gonna accept stack of integers okay we're gonna find the sum in the stack of integers and also we're gonna return integer How do we do that? It's very simple. Yeah, let's uh, write a simple implementation. It's actually here, yeah? so we can just copy it from here. Copy. Control Shift L. Or I, I think code. Reformat Control Alt L. Okay. While R is empty pop and then we do return total okay let's create a stack 
actually we have an integer stack here okay integer stack let's uh, system out println sum of this stack can we do that of course we can because we're accepting the integer stack right so let's run it it prints a six it works uh, exactly this the way we wanted it to work now assume that we want to find the the sum of the elements in a stack of doubles okay so let me copy stack of doubles where is stack of doubles do we have no we don't have so I need to copy this thing let me rename this rename code occurrences uh, stack in stack and this is going to be double stack and we're going to like oh yeah this should be double as well double 2.2 3.3 all right how do we find the stack of doubles again we need to write the different code yeah and uh, that's that gives us a wrong feeling it means probably we're doing something wrong here if we need to copy this code for the stack of doubles hmm? all right so why don't we do stack of numbers yeah, and we return a double can we do that we cannot okay we cannot why let's change it to double we can't do that because stack of numbers is actually different from stack of integers yeah even if the the generic type is number which is super class of integer and super class of double this class doesn't act like a super class of this stack of doubles or stack of integers okay I hope you got a small feeling inside that this is not correct I mean uh, I, I hope you got a little bit of uh, understanding that this is not uh, that doesn't look like look right okay so how do we fix this situation how do we fix it so that we can accept a stack of integers or stack of doubles or stack of stack of anything all right we're gonna do stack of anything well we're gonna end up in the same situation as previously yeah we can't convert anything yeah this question mark any type into an integer we can't cast it yeah we can't cast it because this is unknown yeah this is unknown well how do we deal this situation how do we deal this situation it would uh, the the example yeah, if we copy it actually and uh, try to print you know, let's copy and I'm just gonna comment it out uh, for a brief amount of time let's make it a void it's kind of simpler print stack yeah how do we print the stack we're just gonna say while r dot empty while it's not empty right we're just gonna say system out print ln r dot pop right this is the way to print the array now instead of printing the sum of the we can print this print stack in stack print stack double stack right so here we're kind of accepting uh, we're we're accepting stack of anything okay this question mark means anything and it's the wildcard type very simple example well how do we change this code so that it works since we're trying to convert this into a number it means we assume yeah we're trying to find a total it means we assume that this is this holds number yeah this question mark should be something that extends that extends the that extends the number right so how do we do that we just say extends number okay we just say extends number and here we know that the question mark is number and we can get its double value 
All right? So this is a generic wildcard type with an upper bound. Okay? With an upper bound. Now we can system out print ln sum of in stack sum of double stack compile and run all right everything is working perfectly so these two examples show us that this question mark means that uh, it's anything that extends number yeah, this stack should hold anything that extends number it's kind of similar right because we did something similar here with an upper bound Oh yeah, here. E extends comparable E. Very similar, right? Very similar. But here also we don't care about the type. Here we care about this E. Actually, hmm. Can we change it to question mark? No, we can't. It should be exactly like that. Yeah, here we don't care about this. We also could write E and oh my gosh, we can't E extends. We can't use this here. I'm sorry guys. We have to put this question mark. Yeah. So this is a wildcard generic type with an upper bound. Let's see, did we miss anything? Well here this part finds the maximum in a stack. Any wildcard demo, yeah, it's printing the stack. Super wildcard demo, here it writes um, question mark super T. It means any, any type, this generic stack should hold any type that is T or upper or any of its super classes. All right, and these are graphs that explain you these boundaries. So question mark. It can be any object, right? If you have question mark super E, it means it can be E, or it can be any of the super classes of E. E uh, question mark extends E means it's E or any of its subclasses. So A star means it's something that can store any objects. Yeah. A star extends B means that A should store something that is the subclass of B. Okay, for example, A and B subclass or A and B. If you have A question mark super B, it means it can be either A, B or A and any of B's, uh, B's super classes. Here should be super classes that we found a typo. It should be super classes. Okay, I hope you got the feeling of what these wildcard uh, things mean. In practice, uh, if you don't write very serious code, probably you're going to meet these wildcards very, very rarely. In documentation, however, there are lots of wildcards. I, unfortunately, I didn't prepare an example. I think if I go to the list interface, it should contain some of the examples for the wildcards. Let's just go there. I think it's going to be quicker like this. JKL list. List interface. Here, yeah, he, now you understand these generic types, which is really cool. Yep, here you see. Add all. Collection question mark extends E. What does this mean? Oh my gosh. Well, E is the type of the list, uh, type of the elements in this list, right? And question mark extends E, it means you can add the elements into this list from the collection which stores elements that are of type E, the same type, or any of its subtypes. Okay. Contains all, can, can, uh, this collection can contain any types, this, like the wild card without any boundary. Yeah. Now you hopefully understand uh, these um, question marks here, which is really nice. I'm happy for you guys.
All right, and the last thing is about erasure and restrictions. You can read the information here. Uh, like in short, the information on generics is used by the compiler, but is not available available at runtime. This is called type erasure. Basically, what it means that you know, what it means is that this e uh, it's not available during the uh, during the runtime. It just makes it an object. Okay, like if you create an array list of strings in the memory, it's going to be converted into an array list, and then it's it's going to assume that it stores objects each time. It doesn't it doesn't care about the type. Okay, it doesn't care about the type. That's why you can't do some of the certain things. For example, you can't use e as a constructor because you don't know the type, and it actually doesn't make sense because maybe it doesn't have that constructor. Also, you can't create an array of using this e again because of the same reason. However, you can uh, do a workaround by creating an array of objects and then casting it in, into an array of e's. Also, you can't use the generic type in a static context. For example, in a static method, you can't do it. In a st you can't create static variable e. Why? Because in order to use static methods or static fields, you don't have to create an object of the class. And it means when you, like, if you don't create an object of the class, it means you don't specify the E, right? So, like, unknown E, that's why it's illegal. Also, the last thing is that you can't use uh, these generic uh, types in exceptions. Your exceptions can't be generic. All right, that's it. These are the things that I wanted to talk to you guys. Um, I'm just going to make a quick pause right now, and I'm going to return back and explain you the homework for the uh, uh, homework for this lecture. All right, so the homework is this. <coughs> you need to create a class called map, uh, which is a generic class. I'm quickly going to explain what map is and, and then give you an example of how this map works so map is also called hash map in java in python it's called a dictionary in various different languages it's called differently in java it's called hash map the uh, what's the idea of hash map the idea of hash map is this so in in simple arrays the indices of elements are integers right so like one, zero one two blah 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 blah, blah. But in hash maps, the indices can be of any type. For example, it can be a date, it can be a string, it can be anything else. It can be an in integer, it can be a double, right? So a map or a hash map is just a collection or a list of key value pairs, okay? Key value pairs, all right? It's also called, like in Russian, it's pari ключ okay? A список is par ключ значение. How you can use this to solve problems? Hash maps are perfect example. Uh, I mean, they're perfect fit when you want to count something. Okay. So let's count the number of words in some certain files. I copied the main Java into main TXT. I'm just gonna write here main TXT and then read the contents of the file. And then using the regular expression, I'm just going to say I need anything that contains lowercase or uppercase letters two or more times. It means words le at least two letters long. And I'm going to create the matcher. And then while this matcher can find, I'm going to find them and add them into an array list of words. All right, it's just it's just going to give me the array list of words. Let me just show you guys how the array list of words looks like. This is the main txt, okay, everything that we wrote so far, and we're going to go to map test. Let's see the words. Import Java utility release public class main public static void main stream arcs blah blah blah. All the words in that file. So how do we count them? How do we count those words? Well, very easy. So the the word itself is going to be the key in this map, all right? Key, 
and the value for this uh, pair is going to be the number of times this word appears. Okay, it's going to be like it's going to contain uh, this map. Yeah? It's going the string is going to be the word, and the integer is going to be the the number of times it appears. Okay, so how it works out? You just write one simple loop. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to say okay for each word in the words, if counts contains words. I mean this word. Yeah, if it has this word, what do we do? We set it. We set for this word a new count. What? We get the previous count and add add one. Okay. We increment the count by one. If counts doesn't contain the word, it means we we are seeing this word for the first time. We just say word one. Okay. And then at the end we just print the counts. Here uh, I need to mention that it uses the two string method print let's run it and we can see that shows us import is once Java is once you two once and released six, six times public is eight times static seven times stack 51 times push 25 times these are all the different number of times we wrote coronavirus four times uh, we wrote different words Uh, and now I'm going to explain the map and what kind of methods it should include. All right, the, this is the map class. Okay, so uh, map class has two parametric types, k, k and v. Uh, the keys are going to be stored in a separate array list of keys called keys, and uh, values are going to be stored in a separate array list of v's, and we call it values. Okay. It's going to have a default uh, default constructor, which just creates an empty map. Set, what does set do? Set means add one key value pair, okay? Add one key value pair into this map. But you need to be careful here because this key can already be here. Key, key, all the keys are unique, okay? Uh, this, this is very important. All the keys are unique, all right? That's why you need to check whether this key is already here or not, in this map or not. If it's there, it means you uh, update its value. If it's not there, it means you like insert it, uh, append it as a new pair. Get returns the value by this key. Yeah? This is the return type of the method. This is the parameter, uh, type of the parameter. Contains, takes the key and checks if this key is here. Size returns the number of uh, key value pairs. Get keys returns, it just returns the keys. Get values returns the values. Clear removes all the key value pairs. Is empty returns true if this map is empty. And to string prints your, um, prints your map like this, okay? And puts it into these curly braces. This is gonna be key. This is going to be value. This is going to be key. This is going to be value. Key, value. Okay? All right. That's it. So I'm going to send you guys the deadline for this homework into your emails. And uh, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe if I find enough inspiration, I'm going to make. A UML diagram, but I think it's not necessary. You can find it from here. Uh, the the methods, the method names, and how they look like. Let me just uh, quickly show you once again. You can pause the video and look at what kind of methods are here. So you need to fill out these methods. Also, you can collaborate with your friends uh, by online video calls via Skype or something. Um, and do this problem not alone but with your friend. All right, that's it guys for this homework. Thank you guys for your attention. I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, lecture. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.